And look, America, you know, those of you who voted for Trump, this is what you wanted, this is what you voted for, you screwed around and you're about to find out. The ladies on The View are absolutely losing it over Donald Trump's decision to appoint Tom Homan as his new border czar. They're clearly shaken, especially Ana Navarro, who seems genuinely worried in the clip you're about to see. If you need a refresher or haven't caught up yet, this is exactly what's got them so rattled. So you are the author of the family separation policy. I am not the author of this memo. You're not the author, but you signed the memo. Yes, a, so, zero, a zero tolerance memo. So you provided the official recommendation to Secretary Nielsen on family, for the United States to pursue family separation. I gave Secretary Nielsen numerous recommendations on how to secure the border and save lives. But it says here that you, re you gave her numerous options, but the recommendation was option three, family what, separation. What I'm saying, this is not the only paper where we've given the secretary numerous options to secure the border and save lives. And so the recommendation of the many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommend a zero tolerance. Which includes family separation. The same as is whenever a U.S. citizen parent gets arrested when they're with a child. Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If family. I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father from Mr. Holman, with all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. Now, let's get back to the video. I you saw know. this statistic um, during the elections, and I think I was in the New York Times, that said that when, when Trump said things, people didn't think it applied to them. Yeah. So in the last few days, I got a call from a couple of people, friends of mine, people very close to me in Miami, big Trumpers, uh, who are worried now about what's going to happen to their undocumented nannies that help them raise their <laughs> children. So I told them that I suggested they learn how to clean their kids' ass. <laughs> was saying that the racial slurs, that the threats on immigration, that all of the, the, the Department of Education, all those things that Trump has been saying, RFK, was just ret rhetoric, but hyperbole. Been... They're about Can to I find out. Been doing an point, asylum. They changed this asylum rule, too, though, where there are real people that need asylum in this country, and they ballooned that asylum law, which meant people were cutting the line, and those that were vulnerable, it's being diluted, the pool of people. There, just... is, there should be able to be a real conversation about the problems with yeah. immigration. Mm -hmm. There are problems. Make Go a ahead. point, um, because I, I, I think that there is this... Um, sort of feeling in America that immigrants or undocumented immigrants are taking their jobs. Um, there's this feeling, like you mentioned, that you know, there are American citizens suffering because uh, other, um, I guess, funds are being given to undocumented. Donald Trump's election win came from a deep frustration among many Americans who feel politicians often don't follow through on their promises. Many see Trump as someone who could finally deliver results contrasting with the unfulfilled expectations tied to Kamala Harris and other leaders. In this debate, Sonny Hostin raised concerns about immigration, but many argue that the issue isn't about confusion. Rather, it's about wanting to maintain the cultural fabric of the nation and manage the impacts of an open border on communities. There's also a worry about the potential for voting influence to shift, especially in swing states, which some believe could impact future elections. With Tom Homan now appointed as border czar, some believe he's well-positioned to address these concerns.